Well, at this point in our service today, we want to take some time to farewell Mark and Nicolie Coleman. Uh, for those of you who have kind of been playing along at home, you'll know that uh, this is kind of the second in a handful of farewells at the end of last year and uh, heading into this year. Brett Robinson has moved up to Wyong and has commenced his role as associate pastor at Wyong Baptist Church. And Jodine will be moving on in a few weeks' time uh, to return to study and uh, moving towards becoming becoming a registered psychologist, but we wanted to catch up with Mark and Nicolie today uh, just to, to give you a little bit more background to the decision that they're making, what they're excited about, and also then to take some time to pray for them. So, Mark and Nicolie, welcome. Hello. Thanks Hello. for having us. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, I mean, because technically you finished by the time this will go to air. So, uh, yes, you're welcome for having you back. Uh, <laughs> now you. that you've finished up and you're back here. But uh, let's, l- let, me, let me just kind of start with kind of where we've been. Uh, you've been part of the church now for five years, both of you. Mark, obviously, in the associate role. Uh, every so often on my YouTube feed, the first interview that we did on video with you I think you were there as well. Yeah, was, it's yep. marks on the thumbnail, so that's all I see. It's talking <laughs> with Mark and Nickley, and you look so much younger. I don't know why. Five years really aged you. Who I knows? had hair. <laughs> and it wasn't maybe, gray. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it. But he's kind of looking over the last five years. What would you say would be, I don't know, the highlights? How do you think this has prepared you for what's next in your ministry and just generally in your life? And I'm, I might start with Mark, and then Nickley, if you've got something to add to that. Yeah. Um, well, I've, I've really, I mean, this was my kind of first formal paid pastoral position. So in many ways, that's, you know, that's a, a kind of significant thing. And yes, I've worked uh, at Northside and I've worked in other churches, but this was kind of the first time wearing the associate pastor, you know, robes. Not that we get to wear them, which was a great disappointment. But, um, but so really kind of, um, that's when it kind of got serious, I suppose. And I think um, because of that, it's been the, the space where you know, I've been exposed to a whole bunch of different areas of learning and, and the kind of the, the realities of what it means to be you know, in, in pastoral leadership within a church and, and seeking to kind of invest in people in a particular way, but also, you know, listening to God's guidance and where he might be encouraging us to lead the church and, you know, working out actually what does it mean to lead a group of people towards, you know, a vision that we believe that God has placed on our hearts. So, you know, in many ways that's, um, you know, that's that kind of first taste of that experience in that way. You know, you can never underestimate or erase the kind of significance of that, I think. So, um, you know, of obviously because of its position as first thing it's been it's been really significant for me but i think you know as we've talked about before um just the the context of Gaimia Baptist particularly coming into this space and uh, and the kind of the size and the breadth of um you know, in activities that this church is engaging in and and the sorts of things that this church is thinking about have exposed me to uh, a whole range of things that I think you know, I, I possibly wouldn't have got to explore in other places. And I think also because you know, we're blessed to kind of have an, a f- pretty extensive staff team here, it also allows you to kind of specialize and concentrate a bit on, on certain things. So you know, particularly had the opportunity to kind of think through and, and work through strategies with regards to kind of small groups and life groups you know, in particular here. Um, and you know, and then spending time thinking about okay, well, you know, what does a service look like, and what are we trying to do in that context? Um, so I think you know, in many ways, the time and space to focus on specific things I've really appreciated in this space, and yeah, and also just the kind of the breadth and and diversity of opportunity that comes with being in this size church. Yeah, Nicolene, you have anything to add to that? I mean, you've been involved as more than you know, just kind of random congregation member. You've been overseeing our prayer ministry for the last four and a half years, probably something like that as well. So you've been pretty engaged in this, but what would you add to that? I think what I've really enjoyed, particularly about um, being so involved in prayer, is um, just seeing um, different people walk through life with Jesus and experience his goodness to them. Like um, we've seen, like I personally have seen, have prayed for people and seen incredible answers to prayer, like um, babies and 
healing from cancer and children coming back to Jesus and like incredible things. But, um, but the really amazing thing I always think are the people who just keep showing up and who like there's a verse in, um, in the message version of the Bible and it talks about God thoughts are for God worshippers. And I love seeing that. I love seeing people pursue God for his thoughts and worship him with their whole lives. Um, and so I've really enjoyed seeing people in this place do that. Yeah, great. Now, I mean, one of the things that, Mark, that you and I, I think, shared in common early in the piece, of course, uh, was that we both began ministry largely with no desire to ever step into a senior pastor role. Uh, and so one of the things that I've been quite intrigued about, and I think many in the congregation might be as well, is that journey for you of, you know, being uh, content in, a, in an, an associate role, no real desire to climb the ladder or step into another position, and yet now feeling that it is the right time, the invitation of God, and all of those sorts of things. And that's a decision, of course, that the two of you obviously need to make, and it's not, uh, you know, th those are not the sort of unilateral decisions that get made, at, at least not in our household. <laughs> not in ours either. <laughs> I assumed that that was the case. Uh, so, I concur. <laughs> so can you just kind of talk us through a little bit, you know, in, in, in brief, what that journey's been like. So, you know, again, Mark, what, what's kind of been the heart change for you in that space? I think um, it, you're, you're right. And it, like that has very much been a, you know, a feature, I suppose, of, of, you know, exploring pastoral ministry is I, you know, I felt called to be a kind of support act in some ways, you know, which perhaps trivializes it, but, but more just that idea of, you know, I was rec recognizing a bunch of skills and, and abilities within myself. And I felt like, you know, I, I'm able to offer that. And I think that they, they work to kind of support and actually the freedom of not being in the senior role means that, you know, I, in some ways, I felt like I've been able to be more effective because I, you know, was able to reflect and, um, yeah, yeah, I guess support and encourage, um, you know, a senior leader. But I've, I've kind of found over the course of this year, and I think a, a lot of the work that's gone on for me has kind of been uh, catalyzed by uh, being involved in the Arrow Leadership Program and. You spend a lot of time in Arrow uh, reflecting on yourself and your kind of uh, your gifts and skills, your weaknesses, uh, and um, and also your sort of ten tendencies. And um, and I suppose a whole bunch of thinking got kicked off in February on our first res residential, where we could actually meet in person before uh, a, a pandemic started. Um, and, and, and I found myself thinking about my own leadership and my own tendencies towards, I suppose, kind of diminishing what I, you know, what God had kind of invested in me. Um, and, um, you know, throughout the kind of course of the year, I'd had several conversations with my mentor, who's also my psychologist, um, who had, you know, ultimately kind of summed up in one phrase. He said, you are aware that you're never going to feel ready to be a senior pastor. And I was like, hmm, okay. Uh, and... And he went on to kind of talk about how, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't. And so I you know, started to think about that in that context. And then um, the course of this year, I was approached by other churches, which is uh, something that kind of happens to associate pastors who, uh, where other churches say, well, oh, actually, you know, we've seen that you've been learning and, and training in that context. And, you know, we're now looking for someone to step into either another associate pastor role or into a senior pastor role. And, and, and a couple of churches approached me about becoming their senior pastor. And my first reaction was, <laughs> Uh, like you've got the wrong guy, um, but it but it happened you know a few more times, and I started to take seriously, I suppose, the invitation of God in that space, and to think and kind of be a bit more serious about thinking about you know that as a possibility. And then uh, Arrow Residential Two happened, although this time in in state groups, and then we zoomed in for our kind of joint sessions together. And in our final session, we, um, we did this exercise where we had to kind of reflect on the narratives um, that have sort of dictated our lives and the trajectory of our lives, and then kind of spend some time reflecting on you know, what a new narrative might look like. Um, you know, and 
the kind of significant change in that is you know, the presence of Jesus in kind of shaping that new narrative. And for me, I, I kind of distilled, I suppose, in many ways, a whole lifetime of thoughts down to um, unrealized potential. And that I, I didn't want to be someone who uh, kind of lived out lived under a narrative of unrealized potential. And, you know, I, I, I started reflecting on my life and the things that God has invested in me. And I've been so thankful and amazed, actually, looking back over my life at the positions that God has kind of put me in, the opportunities and the investment that has been poured into me by people and, and organizations and, uh, you know, and experiences, that I was like, actually, I... I can't step into, um, you know, into my 40s, which happens this year, um, and and still live under that narrative of unrealized potential. And and I think you know the kind of the new narratives uh, are ones around re- you know being reminded that actually God is bigger, and that wherever I go, He has gone first, and 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 that you know I'm invited into you know kind of His extraordinary works, and I think. You know, the opportunities came up alongside this sort of self-reflection and, and thinking. And, and I just had this sense that actually this is the invitation of God into something a little bit terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Nicolie, what's, what's been your journey kind of, I guess, you know, observing what's happening for Mark and being a part of those conversations, but then, you know, kind of having to recognize the same invitation uh, to make to make this kind of a decision. Mm. I think I would agree with Mark in that the first church that approached him for the senior role, I also was like, yeah, no. Uh, so, great wife, <laughs> building him up and all that. Um, but I think, I think over a series of months and a series of conversations with different people, um, I would echo what Mark said about that. The desire to not look back on your life and think, oh, that was a, that was a God moment and I missed it because I was scared to step out of the boat. Um, and I think um, it's interesting that it is a bit, like it's quite a scary thing um, to go somewhere to be, to put your hand up and say, oh yeah, no, I can do that. But I think the real marker of this decision for me um, is that we have been, as, as the Bible says, we have been led forth in peace. Um, so there is, there is a part of me on the surface that thinks, <laughs> um, for both of us. Um, but underneath that, there's just this very still peace that actually, this is God. And I want to do what he says because he knows the best way to live. Yeah, that's a good. That's a that's a good decision. <laughs> that's a good decision. Uh, now you've spoken a little bit of the uh, sense of you know what's next and the things that obviously you're going to be learning and the whatnot. But as you step into this new role, uh, a new community of faith, Ashfield Baptist Church, apart from you know the move to Summerhill and uh, some of those kind of really pragmatic things, what are you looking forward to? about this next little season, this, this, this ne- next little patch as you kind of step out of the boat, step out in faith. So why don't you kind of continue? Like what, what's, what's exciting you about this moving forward? Um, <laughs> my, my commute to work is now like 20 minutes. <laughs> Set apart from the pragmatics. <laughs> I know, sorry. But that is worth rejoicing <laughs> in, I have to admit. From an hour to 20 minutes, that's pretty good. I'm really looking forward to seeing... Um, Mark flourishing. I'm really looking forward to seeing what God does with him when Mark has no one but God to rely on. Um, I think you have an amazing staff team here. Um, And like he said, it's allowed him to become very specialised. But I think um, I was saying to him when he was saying to me, I can't do this role. Like I am not a senior pastor. Like what are we thinking about? And I, I said to him, I think that's kind of what God is looking for. <laughs> he doesn't necessarily want someone who goes, oh, yeah, no, I can totally do this, um, because then you won't need him at all. Um, so I'm really looking forward to just seeing him, as I said before, step out of the boat 
and have to rely on Jesus and what Jesus has done in him over the last 40 years. So now it's changed from you stepping out of the boat to watching him yeah, step out of the boat. Yeah, exactly, so. as I wave. <laughs> you first. <laughs> I'll be here if you need me. <laughs> exactly. I hear him. He's out there. <laughs> He's out there. You'll love it. Go. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and Mark, what are you looking forward to? So I'm looking forward to seeing Nicolay step out of the boat. <laughs> but I think I, I mean, I genuinely am. I think, you know, uh, a smaller church context means that um, you know th- that there are potentially opportunities which uh, you know Nicolay will get, and I, and you know, like there's it's no secret that every sermon I preach goes through Nicolay as a filter. She is my kind of theological reference point, and you know, and I'm excited for for more of that to kind of come out. And you know, at the beginning of last year, we had the opportunity to um, to do kind of a a joint set of talks on a, another church's weekend away. And, you know, and I, I loved that. It was just amazing to kind of um, partner with my wife in the gospel um, without trying to sound too much of a Christian cliche. But, but it was just, um, yeah, it was a great opportunity. I'm looking forward to more of that. Um, but I'm, I'm particularly excited about this community. We, um, we have experienced extraordinary kindness in the interview process that this, this church went through. And, and in fact, um, you know, a lot of my kind of confidence in stepping forward into this, you know, comes, comes from God and, and comes from that kind of acceptance and realization I've got to depend on him. It's all about him. But, you know, there's not an insignificant portion that comes from going, like this is a really capable congregation who, you know, who have kind of had uh, at least a year of not having a pastor and, you know, um, and, and have really just a- accomplished incredible things. You know, I've been, apart from anything else, working on safe churches policy and, uh, and a whole bunch of other things, you know, without a senior leader for them and, and just a tremendously kind of invested congregation. And, um, you know some some extraordinary experience there and and they said to me we are really interested in in kind of nurturing a younger leader which is why they have kind of picked me over um, some other people with more experience um, because they felt like actually we've got the um, you know we've got the kind of the tools and experience in certain areas and and we, you know we want to share that with someone but what we actually want is kind of the um you know the vision and the energy and the drive that stereotypically comes with younger people i feel like a really old person but uh, <laughs> but um yeah i'm really excited by that that kindness and stepping into a community that's shaped by that mm, great great well, I trust that that gives you a little bit of background to the decision that uh, Mark and Nicolay have made and the opportunity that sits before them. And we're going to take a few minutes to pray for them in just a moment. But before we do that, we wanted to give you an opportunity to express your appreciation, your love, your thanks, your blessings uh, to Mark and Nicolay. And so what we're going to do right now is a number is going to appear on the screen, and that is Mark's work phone. Uh, we have asked permission from Mark to use this number so feel free to spam him. But right now, in the next couple of minutes, I want you to do this. I want you to text Mark, Mark and or Nicoly, so you can kind of do one or the other or both. And I'd just like you to take a few moments and just express something you're thankful for, uh, to express your love to them, to, um, to, to wish them well in their future, to commit to pray for them, whatever is on your heart. Uh, we're going to just take a couple of minutes now, right now in the service, to allow you to do that. And then in a couple of minutes... We're going to pray for them. So do that right now. The number's on your screen. uh, And uh, please take the opportunity to do that now as we farewell them uh, from our community of faith and send them into a new one. Well, I hope you took the opportunity uh, to do that, to text Mark and or Nickley in that space. Obviously, more time to do that. If you're still in the middle of a long, 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 long paragraph, by all means, finish it. But uh, if you can pause for just a moment, because we wanted to take some time to pray for uh, this family, Mark, Nickley, and Alexander, and send them as a community of faith. So would you please join me as we pray for them? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the journey that you bring all of us on. 
that uh, you do not just leave us in one place uh, to work stuff out on our own, but you have plans and purposes, and you continue to invite us to participate with you in the grand plan to restore and renew the world. And we thank you for the privilege that we have had over the last five years to watch some of that journey in Mark and Nicolay's life. We thank you for uh, the process by which you brought them here, for the gifts and abilities that they both have, for their willingness to throw themselves into the work of ministry here, uh, not just because Mark is paid, but because it's a passion of theirs that you have placed upon their hearts. We thank you for the journey over this last year in particular, leading them to consider what it looks like to step out of the metaphorical boat. We thank you for the opportunity that has been raised before them to step into a role at Ashfield Baptist Church, to move into a new community. And while we are, of course, saddened by the fact that they will be a little bit further away and we will not have the same level of contact with them anymore, we are excited to see what you will do with them as they step into a space where they will need to rely upon you. I pray that you would keep, uh, particularly Mark, uh, from arriving. I pray that you would keep him from uh, mastering the techniques of leadership uh, and then feeling like he can do this on his own. I pray that you would bring good people around both of them, those who can be uh, dear, close friends and allies uh, in the work of ministry, but also those who can continue to teach and to lead and to guide uh, in all that they do. We want to pray your blessing on them. Uh, we do ask for uh, all their physical needs. Uh, the place that they are going to live, the places where Alexander will go to preschool and then eventually school, for all of the, the incidentals that you would provide for them. But we pray a blessing on their ministry. We pray that as they, as they lead in a new context, in a new season for both of them, that you would indeed allow them to flourish. We pray your blessing on Ashfield Baptist Church as a community of faith. Pray that they would be responsive to your invitation, that they would be courageous to uh, ask tough questions and make hard decisions, and that they would see the blessing that comes from doing so. We pray for transformed lives. Uh, we pray for transformation for Mark and for Nicoly. We pray for transformation for that community of faith. And we pray for the transformation of their wider community, the neighborhoods and areas, the suburbs around them, that they might be a shining example of what it means to live a life following after you. So we thank you so much for them, for the time that we have had with them. We pray that you would go with them and that you would keep them on our hearts and minds. Keep them in our prayers. Uh, and we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. So there you have it, folks. The, uh, the blessing and the sending for Mark and Nicolay. We'll be doing the exact same thing in our on-site services, so you have not missed out on anything, and neither will they have uh, missed out on anything as well. Uh, please, please be in prayer for Mark and Nicolay over the next couple of weeks in particular. Mark's not going to be starting until... March, so there's a little bit of time before they're actually kind of on the ground, but uh, for that next period of time, lots of preparation work to be done, and uh, we look forward to hearing what God does through you. God bless you guys. Thank you.